Hello everyone, today we're going to look at uh, an application by the name of Ocean Audio. Uh, Ocean Audio is a, an audio capture and editing uh, application, very similar in many ways to a program called Audacity. Uh, many of you will be familiar with Audacity, a cross-platform uh, application uh, which runs on uh, Windows, OS X and Linux, uh, as does Ocean Audio. The primary difference is that Ocean Audio is uh, is, is kind of cut down version of Audacity in the terms of its of its feature set. Um, however, if like me, uh, your needs really don't extend past perhaps capturing a mono or a stereo soundtrack and performing perhaps some gain adjustments, some compression adjustments, and some tonality EQ adjustments, then I think this may well be of interest. One of the problems I find with uh, with Audacity is that it's just too feature laden. You can easily get lost in in the application. Um, the other thing is that uh, certainly on the Linux platform, it's not the prettiest of applications. Good old uh, Audacity. Um, I'll fire it up, and you'll uh, you'll see what I mean. But um, particularly if you run a dark theme like uh, like I do, so here's Audacity running with a dark theme, and as you can see, it's not the prettiest of uh, of things. Some of these smaller icons <coughs> just don't seem to render very well. I mean, what is that? For example, there, who knows? Um, the meters look pretty dreadful. This dark and light just really doesn't work. So that's enough of that. So let's um, let's just take a look at uh, some details on Ocean Audio. I've got their their page open here, their web page. Um, so as you can see, it's easy, fast, and powerful audio editor. Um, that pretty much does sum it up. Uh, if all you need to do is do a mono or a stereo soundtrack, this probably is going to be all that uh, all that you need. Um, number of the features. Let's just go in here and look at some of the features. But one of the really nice things about this is that you can do real-time previews, as we'll see in a moment. We'll we'll, we'll edit a kind of demo um, demo audio file and we'll perform some um, some modifications to it. But um, the thing really is instantaneous. It responds immediately to any changes you make, and you can preview them in this uh, this little preview window here that pops up um, alongside every effect that you uh, that you enable. So let's not waste too much time looking at the website. Let's close that down and let's actually uh, let's actually take a look at Ocean Audio. So the multimedia on here, Ocean Audio, and straight away I think um, you'll see that compared to uh, compared to Audacity, this is a much nicer and much cleaner interface. Um, for a start, we've actually got our icons and our fonts and our text displaying as you might expect. Um, two ways to get a file into Ocean Audio. You can um, open it obviously from the file menu, or you can use a little tab here and a nice little animation springs out and you can drop your, your files in. So we'll try that. I'll just show you how that works. I've got a file manager open down here. and. I've uh, taken the liberty of setting up a test audio file, uh, which, if I can remember where I've put it, it's in recordings. Now, this is a recording made a few years ago now by uh, a well-known speaker designer called Alan Shaw. Um, Alan Shaw partnered up with a, a colleague by the name of Spencer Hughes. They're very famous in the UK loudspeaker industry in producing very high-quality audio file loudspeakers. Um, and both of them have a heritage stretching back into the uh, the BBC research days when when the good old good old BBC was um, was instrumental in developing uh, high quality loudspeakers and performing loudspeaker research. So they went into the um, the uh, one of the BBC uh, test facilities where they had a, an anechoic chamber set up. Anechoic chamber allows people to remove room effects effectively from the audio signal. So you'll hear in a moment that Alan and Derek sat down in front of a very expensive microphone, recorded some audio in the anechoic chamber, um, the result of which is a very, very pure audio recording. Now we're going to use it today just to demonstrate this program, but I'll actually put that up as a separate link or a separate video later, because it's well worth downloading and playing back on your own audio or computer audio systems just to get a, a feel for how accurate your, your audio really is. Um, without all the added EQ and compression which is normally applied to audio. This file has none of that, it has no compression, it has no EQ, it is straight from the microphone straight onto a uh, digital recorder. So let's drop that in, so we can drop that in here and as you'll see very very fast, uh, very very fast input and we can see it listed here. You can add 
various different tracks in here and it will list them in, in, in the column on the left hand side here but it displays this nice waveform uh, in the window to, to the right here. You can change the theming by the way to change the colours of this but I think the default one here um, is by far the nicest so once that's in we can close that and expand that out. A nice large level meters along the side here. One of the things I really like about this program is it has very nice, very large um, peak hold meters. You'll see you'll see when we actually start the replay in a moment that the, um, the meters respond very quickly and they have a peak facility so they actually hold the peak level for uh, just a second or two before it falls back which is, which is very useful when you're trying to ac accurately uh, look at your, your levels. Um, Let's just take a snippet of this. I'll just play this from the start and you'll you'll just hear what this sounds like out of the box. So this is the file to start before we do any modification. So here we go. Well Derek, here we are on the 28th of June 2007. We are in the BBC Kingswood Warren Anechoic Chamber. Spacious day indeed. So there we go. So that's the file actually loaded in and playing. Now, uh, we can perform various uh, adjustments. So you can perform an adjustment to the whole file or you can just select a piece so for example let's just select from here to here uh, let's go to effects as you can see you can insert silence you can reverse the track you can invert it which is basically to phase invert the signal uh, you can add smoothing <coughs> excuse me uh, you can remove any DC that's on the signal uh, you can normalize you can adjust amplitude and you've got some dropout menus here to do that fade in fade out you can adjust gain, so we can make that portion of the track louder or softer. And what's nice, as nice I hinted at earlier, you can preview down in the section below here. So if we wanted to adjust the gain on this. So say, for example, we wanted to boost that by, let's say, 4.5 dB. So there we go. And we hit apply. You'll see that's now gain boosted by 4.5 dB. Now let's say we want to take a section of this and we want to apply some some equalization. So we're going to effects, let's go into equalization and we have a choice between an, between an 11 and a 31 band equalizer. So I've already played around with this earlier and I've actually put some presence band boost in there. That has the effect of making the sound harsher, making the voice edgier, um, crisper to some degree but very unnatural. Now I've gone a little bit too far with that so I'm going to pull that down slightly because I'm slightly OTT. But we can preview that so we can preview just this section here. If your loudspeaker is accurate it, will, it should sound and the same you, and you can as hear the in your so, so we've, we've eliminated the how harsh and hard that's made exactly. recording. Now if we then go and apply that you see it's instant um, and our processor here barely twitched it's sitting around 15% usage um, and that's with the screen recording uh, software going on so it's barely had any effect it's very very light on resources uh, lighter if anything than audacity seems to be um, so back to our recording if we put the cursor just behind where we've made the change uh, just there you'll hear it starts to play in a normal way and then it will flip onto the EQ section so we have a pure voice Therefore, when you play it through your loudspeaker in your listening room, if your loudspeaker is accurate, it will, it should sound the same as the same person in your living room. Uh, we can do some other effects in here. So let's take another section. Let's take that one. Let's go back into effects. Uh, let's take a look at the delay section. So here we can do reverb, we can do chorus, we can do flanger, vibrato. Um, any of these will pick up the menu so you can go across the top here and change these um, and you can flick between them real time so let's start with delay um, and let's preview and, and if, if our, our listeners, listeners are friends, friends listening, listening back, back to this there we go flanger okay, capsule. chorus mm -hmm. And if our listeners are very, listeners very, very, very heavy reverb, which we can adjust, of course. Quite unlike the quality of voice, as many people we can take that down. Absolutely. And we can apply that to our track, and as you can see there, that's done in a matter of a couple of second, seconds, I should say.
you can also change the view uh, within this window. So obviously we've got the waveform showing at the moment, but if we go into view here, we can look at spectral view, which will give us a spectrogram of the signal, very nice. We can also have a dual pane view, so you've got the spectrogram there and the, and the audio file itself. Uh, we can add tracks, so if you wanted to add another track in there you can do, you can zoom, you can show ID on the particular tracks, you can push the sidebar in and out, that was our sidebar which you saw earlier for loading tracks into the system. And one of the other nice uh, nice features of this program is it has a built-in sound generator. So if like me you, um, you work on electronics maybe or acoustics and you need to generate uh, waveforms, sound waveforms, and there's a built-in sound generator within this uh, within this program. So you can see here you can generate noise, tones or silence. So if we click on tones for example, um, this is currently set to generate a 1 kHz uh, sine wave. You can see here the flavour of, uh, of wave is set to sine. You can change that to a triangle wave, a sawtooth or a square wave. But um, just to give you a preview, I won't do this for too long. Don't hurt anybody's ears, but if we preview that, we get a one kilohertz sine wave. Um, you can also sweep. So if we do the end frequency at say just over say, seven kilohertz, and we take this down to maybe uh, two hundred and thirty, and now we play this. We get a sweep. That can be very useful if you're um, testing room acoustics or audio electronics uh, for performance. Um, not only can you play that, but you can actually record that to the track. So, for example, um, if we were to hit OK, then this particular section that I had highlighted is now uh, an audio waveform. So, we've inserted an audio waveform into our lovely clean recording of Alan and Derek. If we now play that, um, yeah, one of the best microphones in the world, and we've actually used a beam. We've used a beam sweep. There we go. So that's just an overview of the program. Uh, I think it's uh, it's very useful. It's uh, it's simpler. It's prettier. Um, it's a bit more intuitive, I think, than Audacity, um, and it's free. Uh, there is no charge to download it. Unfortunately, it's not free and open source. It is a proprietary piece of software, but it clearly comes from a very small developer or group of developers, not some large conglomerate that's after your cash. So in such circumstances, I don't mind too much that it's closed source. Um, but that decision, of course, is entirely, entirely up to you. Well, I hope you found that useful. As I say, I will post that uh, recording um, up onto a separate video and I'll post it um, as a high quality upload. So do feel free to uh, to listen to that and um, hopefully it will come in useful for um, free drone audio systems. But uh, that's it for today and uh, bye for now.